In this video, we're going to talk about the fifth and final principle of readability, which is simple language. So what makes language simple? Unfortunately, there's a lot of bad advice out there. And when I say bad, I don't necessarily mean always wrong, but it's advice that is given too strongly without, without balance, without uh, context. And uh, some of those um, include things like avoid passives. You hear that all the time. Be informal, write conversationally. Avoid redundancy, avoid jargon, use simple words. Use short English words or write short texts. And uh, while all of these contain some good uh, germs of good advice, for example, write short texts, but you don't want to, for example, with short texts, you don't want to deprive people of the information. So you don't want to dumb your text down just because, uh, uh, just because somebody told you to write short texts. So that's an example of, of advice that is not, not uh, really all that, all that sort of wrong on its own, but it can be, uh, it can be, it's bad advice really if you, if you apply it literally. So here are some examples of, of advice and, and why, why it's not, uh, when it's not appropriate. So for example, uh, always, if, if you're told to avoid passives, well, for example, you have two sentences. The school was founded in 1996, and they founded the school in 1996. Obviously, the first one is much more appropriate in almost every context you can see. You can, you can think of using, using that sentence. So that's not good advice. Another advice that's often given is avoid redundancy. But very often, redundancy is actually what helps people understand. And pairing things to the bone makes, uh, simply removes any other catch points that people could have. So for example, when I send an email and I, I, I say, I want, let's meet next Tuesday, I always put parentheses uh, and the actual date uh, be there and that is just to both uh, ensure that when somebody's maybe reading it on Monday and they don't really know if next Tuesday is tomorrow or the Tuesday after that well they have that they have the backup and also if I made a mistake uh, in, in Tuesday I meant Wednesday well the date is sort of a, a checking point so the person can, can come back to me and they use do you really mean uh, the 24th or Tuesday so that's a really good good strategy for that uh, also, using simple words is not always uh, appropriate or doesn't even make things simpler. So for example, you may, you may say something like, when, when you come uh, to, for class, remember attendance will be taken. So that, that is uh, appropriate, it's not very difficult, it's short. But of course, the, the, the more informed, more direct, uh, short, simpler, quote unquote, way of saying it is we will check who showed up. But that is almost never, uh, never appropriate. So, um, so but make sure, again, that, that you don't take that advice too literally. Um, another example of this sort of simple word advice and short word advice that, that doesn't always work quite well is, is, a, difference, is, is, is a difference between uh, short, typical old English words and uh, their, their Latinate uh, um, uh, companions. And so if, you, if I ask you which one of these is simpler, well, you would, of course, say get is simpler. And if I use in Microsoft Word, I can now ask uh, for it to mark complex words, and it will actually mark acquire uh, as a complex word, and it will suggest get as one of the alternatives that is not as complex. But things are not quite as uh, simple as that, because of course, uh, if you look at the dictionary, you're going to see that get has a lot more uh, meanings, possible meanings, than acquire. And that, of course, is a possible source of confusion. But actually, it's even worse, because get has a lot more uh, possible meanings than acquire. So, so you want to be careful there. And of course, if, you're speak, if, you, if your readers are not native speakers, uh, you, will, uh, you will find that, for example, to translate get into French, you have 15 options. To uh, translate acquire, you only have four. So again, for a non-native speaker, it may be much easier to figure out what acquire means as opposed to get. And if you, in Russian, it's even worse. You have 45 possible options as a verb to translate. Uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to translate words for acquire, you only have eight. But things, of course, don't end there. It's even more complicated because there are 19 English phrasal verbs that can be, uh, that can be made from get. So get across, get along, get down, get down to, and so on. And so, so a non-native speaker will be struggling with that. Which one of these? Is there something else that I need to pay attention? So they may very easily be confused by that. And it's even worse because each of these phrasal verbs has another set of senses. So the simple word get actually turns out to be much more complex than, um, than you, may have, you may have thought. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't use it, but it just means that you're not always improving things by, uh, by using it instead of a word that seems more difficult to you because you had to learn it in school. And so just, just the lesson there is that non-native speakers will not always find short and easy words as easy uh, to understand as you might think. So here are some tips of our simpler language that I think uh, make, uh, help us make better decisions about what to do. So, so 
it's not so much about short words, but it's about relevant words. It's about words that, the, that, that, that either the readers know or that are explained in the text. Uh, remember, in the previous video, I showed you you can use a picture to explain spires in that. Uh, good advice, instead of being informal, uh, is to address the audience. There's actually good research that shows that, that, that if you speak to people, saying you instead of uh, more general tendencies, that, that that will actually improve, um, improve comprehension. And also, it's, it's a balance politeness a little bit, because politeness can include, in, include a lot of complexity into language. So one of the things that uh, I often see that people start with when they write uh, something on a web page is oh, welcome to this site. Or when they write an email, we're very pleased to have this opportunity. And that could be very often too much politeness because uh, 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 what was the last time you came to a website and you didn't see welcome to this site and felt insulted? That, that usually doesn't happen. It's just something that we do to, to, because we have nothing else to say. It. So, so this would be some, some candidates for perhaps where the politeness is, is not very useful. Now, of course, you can take that too far. And so in, a, in the context of writing an email, uh, sending something like that, send me the slides ASAP is probably not only not polite, but it's not very helpful. So uh, you, you, can, you should probably include more information. But of course, there's the other extreme where you, where you go to this flowery, indirect language, which is how language English expresses politeness. I was wondering if you could find some time to send me the slides. Uh, I need to do some final formatting before I leave, blah, blah, blah. But actually, uh, in this sentence, perhaps the politeness is too much, but it's good, good to give some context. So, so again, he, we see that a bit more language is useful, but we need to find a balance between the two. Uh, very often, when you're giving instructions, you should definitely uh, pare things down if you can. So, for example, uh, very often people write in the emails things like, you may like, register, like to register by clicking here, whereas it's much better to say register here, or just simply have an icon uh, with a shopping basket and, and register. So that's, that's a simpler way of doing things. Now, you can use some tools to help you simplify your, your language. And a very useful thing uh, that I like to use is called the Hemingway app. And the Hemingway app is a free online uh, editor where you can paste your document and it's going to give you a grade and it's going to highlight long sentences. It will also highlight passive voice and, and, uh, uh, and adverbs, but I probably wouldn't worry too, too much about them. But the, uh, but, but the long sentences, hard to read sentences, are much more useful. And the, gra and the overall score is also important because that tells you how many years you, of formal schooling uh, your readers would on average have to, re have to require to be able to read the text. And you want to keep that as low as possible, even if you're writing for quite sophisticated audiences, because even they don't want to waste their time on decoding very complicated text uh, that, unless it is um, academic text. So that, that is um, something to think about. So, um, if we look at that history page that we've looked at uh, in previous videos, well, that doesn't have very high readability. It, it gets grade 16. All the sentences are, are very long. So just with a very few simple things, by shortening the sentences uh, and paragraphs, uh, we can get to grade, uh, grade 11, which is much easier, uh, easier to read. Now, uh, this is not always easy. So how well do the experts uh, do on, on this text? Well, so this uh, is uh, uh, from a page uh, on a website by the plain English campaign. And as you can see, the plain English campaign uh, are focusing too much perhaps on some of the other advice, but they, they could make their text much e easier to read just by simply shortening their sentences and, uh, and perhaps make, using some simple language here and there. So because they're in grade 13, and that isn't very good. They, they should really sort of be, be at grade 10 at, at least. Now, this is, a, this is from a document that I wrote uh, many years ago about, about spelling uh, uh, about simple language, and uh, and I wasn't even trying to make it simpler, but I, I somehow managed to uh, be better than than the plain plain English uh, uh, side by getting great ten. So so I, at least I was sort of following some of these. Now this is for tips for writing plain language from uh, the uh, the Norman Nielsen group, about w which we'll talk in another video. And as you can see, they talk about plain language and they get great now. They really uh, do a good job. But you can also see they have some sentences that are quite long, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Some of the sentences can be uh, can be longer. It doesn't mean that every sentence has to be short. But overall, you should stri strike a good balance of long and short sentences to make it uh, make it easier uh, to read. So the other thing, of course, uh, when you're looking for simple language is word choice, choosing, choosing words. And, uh, and very often, again, people can oversimplify. So there's a famous cartoon by uh, XKCD that tried to describe uh, the, the, the space shuttle by using only the 1,000 most frequent words in the English language. And using frequent words is a good idea, but if you're limited to the 1,000 most frequent ones, you're going, to, you, you're going to end up with things that are hard to say and hard to understand. So, uh, so, so you have things like looking at the uh, exotics, lots of fires come out, out here. So, so that, you know, that may or may not be 
the way you want to do it. And somebody's even made an editor uh, for Upgore Up 5 text editor that, people, that will only accept words that are in the top 1,000 most frequent words. And so when I've tried to put in bananas there, well, it doesn't, there's no, there's no bananas. So I try, I like fruit that is yellow, but neither fruit or yellow belong in the top 1,000 words in the English language. So as you can see, it's not, that's not a good strategy. However, there are some good tools that can help you more uh, with the words you're choosing. And one of them is the iWeb Corpus, and uh, that's a free online tool on, uh, provided by the Brigham Young University. And if you go to the, to the word section and search for a word, then it will give you an uh, overview of the word. It will give you the definition, just like a dictionary, synonyms, synonyms just like a thesaurus. But more importantly, it will give you all the different uses of the word. So it will, it will show you the most common collocations. Uh, for example, what is it like when it's to another, next to another mound? Now, different clusters. So, uh, so you're going to see what is it what it's like if it's, if it's three words together and so on. But it will also show you different topics in which it is used, and it will give you some other information there as well, as well as the sort of general frequency of the word. So that's going to give you much better information about, about the word than, um, than simply looking at whether it's in the top 1,000 words or very simple. And the one more thing that you can also get is quickly see it in context. That's called the keyword in context, or quick. And, and here you, can, you, can, you quickly can scan through the different uses of the word and see if using it appropriately or maybe if it's an appropriate word for your, uh, for your purposes. So that is about word choice, and um, one of, which is the last tip for making your language simpler. So in the next video, we're going to have a look at what we can learn from user experience research.